Hello boys and girls. So today I'm going to be attempting to go through the uh, behemoth challenge on uh, overthewire.org. So if you're not familiar with these, these are just kind of like uh, hacking challenges. Um, basically it's a SSH server that you can uh, log into and they've got a bunch of different uh, binary files that you have to kind of examine and attempt to exploit. Um, pretty cool stuff in my opinion. Uh, I haven't done this one before, so I'm gonna be doing this kind of blind, but I have done some of these other war games uh, before, some of the easier ones that they have, so this one's rated three out of 10 here, so I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty new to this stuff, so hopefully that's not gonna kick my ass here and we'll, we'll see how it goes all right so um yeah this this right here is just a little script that i wrote because all these challenges kind of have the same pattern and i just got sick of typing in like ssh blah blah dot labs dot whatever so this is really cool I just created this text file where I store my passwords. The first level password is given to you, Behemoth Zero here. So, um, and I can just use my script like this. You give it the name of the game and the level. And boom, we're in. All right, let's take a look. So, I think all the levels are gonna be in here. Yep. All right. So it looks like they're not giving any source code this time, which is pretty interesting. Uh, so I'm going to have to like look at the actual assembly code here and see what's going on. So let's just go ahead and run the uh, program, see what's going on here. Okay. It's asking for a password. All right. Let's, let's take a look. So on the previous ones I did, they gave you the C source code, which was pretty easy to read, but I guess I'm gonna have to look at the object code itself, so. Not too big of a deal, hopefully. So, in case you guys don't know, this object dump program uh, lets you look at the compiled machine code, um, and it kind of breaks it down into functions for you, so. It, even if you don't have any source code, you can still kind of try to figure out what's going on. This slash D flag uh, shows you uh, basically the code parts of the binary file because you know you've got a bunch of stuff in. So let's take a look at that. Um, all right. So we got a bunch of like functions like this. As far as I'm aware, I don't really have to pay attention to these. These are just kind of like put into all programs by the compiler. Uh, does a bunch of stuff that's not really important for this. So it looks like we got our main function here. So this would be like if you had a C program and you, I can kind of demonstrate that. If you had a C program over here doing whatever, and you compiled it, it would show up in the binary file like this. And these are like the actual machine instructions that are generated. So what I'm looking for here is it's kind of, it's checking for a password. So let me see here. So the string compare function looks interesting. It's probably where it's, checking the password so before I even like jump into GDB I'm just gonna uh, take a quick look here at the this cool utility called strings it's just gonna like parse through the binary and look for any like human readable strings so uh, they may have been uh, dumb enough to like actually leave the password as a string in the file without any kind of security is a level zero, so I wouldn't be surprised. So, like, like yeah, got these three things right here that kind of look like uh, they might be passwords. So, what I'm gonna do, put those right there, and then let's just try them out. He 
came at zero. All right, so the first one, Unix, is better than Windows. I agree. Mm. Hold on, I think I did that wrong. Let me try this again. It's not, it's not one of the copy over. All right, whatever. Unix is better than Windows. Oops, let's spell it right. Access denied. All right, let's try this. You know what? I don't know why this shit is. Follow the white rabbit. There we go. Access denied. Pac-Man is shitting on crack. Whatever that means. Hmm, okay. Wasn't that easy. Maybe I spelled this one wrong. Let me just try it again. Okay. Well, that's, that's probably not what it is. Okay. Probably just a little red herring. That's pretty funny. Um, okay. So now... One thing you're going to be doing a lot in these kind of challenges is using GDB, so you're probably going to want to use that. What I'm going to do is find our string compare call right here. I'm going to go ahead and put a breakpoint right here, and we're going to see what's going on there. Let's type a bullshit password in. Okay, so now we're at our breakpoint. Um, so the way function calls work in, in like the machine level is the arguments to the function are gonna get pushed onto the stack here. So I believe let's let's take a look at string compare. So yeah, string compare takes two strings, or two pointers. Um, so it's probably what these are. Uh, here, so if I kind of let's, let's look at two. Uh, okay, so I'll explain this command here. This is X is for examine. So what we're doing is we're looking at the live memory in the process as it's running right now. This is two. This is hexadecimal, and this is for words, which is four bytes. So, and this is the ESP is the stack pointer. So every time they call this push thing here, it pushes something onto the stack. So if we look at two, we look at, we're basically looking at the top two values on the stack with this. So we got it. Um, okay. So then I can do examine string, give it the address to the string. So that is my string that I just passed in. And then this, I hope, is gonna be the password that it's checking against. And it looks like eat my shorts might be the password. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get out. Um, we're gonna run the program again. Eat my shorts. Access granted, there we go. The way, oh yeah, I forgot to explain this part. The way all these work is there this thing called set UID programs. So let me demonstrate that real quick. So if you look at the thing here, so each level is set up to where the program is runnable by the user for that level, but it's owned by the um, next level user. And they added this S flag. So Basically, when you run this program, you're actually running it as Behemoth 1. So your privileges are kind of elevated there. So when I do this, and I do eat my shorts, what it did is it it uh, spawned a shell for me, but not as Behemoth 0 anymore, actually as Behemoth 1. So now I can actually read the password file for Behemoth 1. And there we go. That is the as our password for the next level. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add this to my password file. Oh, wrong. Not cat. Echo. As you can see there, I got that. And then now I can log out. 
Use my old little script. And boom, now I'm logged in as Behemoth 1. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks a lot.